little bit then uh, about the issue of uh, restoration uh, of ecosystems and land in Uganda. How is that going? You all know that uh, the UN decade on ecosystem restoration, it is a sort of a campaign or a commitment of multiple stakeholders, multiple partners, those who add up to the UN to make increase their efforts on land restoration with an intention of uh, recovering the indigenous lost forest covers, you know, with an intention of increasing their forest covers, with an intention of minimizing emissions from the atmosphere. So at the country, Uganda, you all remember that our forest recover was at 24%, uh, that is in 1990, but because of negative pressure from the communities, negative pressures on forests, we lost the forest cover up to 8.9%. That was in 2017. But still, because of multiple efforts, multiple stakeholders, commitment from the government, partners, we have managed to recover the forest recover up to 13% currently. And how best are we doing this? We have the so-called conservation forestry. This is all about protecting the already existing forests, the already indigenous the existing. When I talk of indigenous, I mean the indigenous trees whose gestation period goes up to 50 years of existence, whose rate, whose rate of carbon dioxide sequestration is too high. They can store carbon for so long. So in this way, under conservation of forestry, working, working hand in hand with the Ministry of Water and Environment in Uganda, our partners under the running out of trees campaign we have in Uganda, we are combining efforts and restoring our forest recover. In the same way, in Uganda, the land ownership system is private, that the largest piece of land is owned by the private farmers. And in this way, they cannot own, they have failed to own indigenous trees on their land. But how best are we convincing them to pick interest in owning trees on their private land? We are on a sector of agroforestry. That agroforestry, this is another way of promoting forestry, but with very many benefits. One, food security. Next, household income. And as well as serving the main purpose of the forest recover increase. We are promoting growing of fruit trees. That if a farmer, we have trees like Cariandra in Sri Lanka, we have trees like uh, Prunus Africana, which have multi-purpose laws, you know, that if a farmer incorporates them with his or her crops on a garden, they will have no effect on, on annual crops. You know, they will be basically serving the purpose, keeping nitrogen in soils like in Cariandra in Sri Lanka. It is a very good tree known as a fodder for, for, for animal keepers, for beekeeping, you know, it attracts a lot of bees for pollination purposes. So, through mindset change, capacity building, involving these farmers on the direct benefits of owning trees on their land, we are trying to attract them into afforestation programs. Similarly, in the, at, at the Ministry of Water and Environment, we have a, a national policy paper framework on carbon crediting and financing. This is aiming at attracting farmers from commercial forestry to conservation forestry on their private land. How is this going to be beneficial? That you grow a tree on your land with an intention of benefiting, getting money out of it. We have our partners like the Grow Foundation. These are our strong partners whose overall interest is promote is to promote sustainable forest management with an intention of carbon crediting and financing. And such as stakeholders in place, we believe that the Uganda as a forest recover will rapidly increase if we use properly use the private land under conservation forestry. Still, the progress will be registered. Still, we have another way of uh, urban forestry. This is all about promoting trees in a town, promoting trees along road reserves, and this is happening. We have our uh, Uganda National Reserve Authority, where we have a partnership with them through my leadership, and we are growing trees on road reserves. For example, we are now, apparently, we are on 270 kilometers growing trees in road reserves, with an intention that uh, as we increase 
the forest recover, we are also targeting the betterment of their cities, of our cities. You have been here in Ibaku, you see people, uh, you see trees around the town, very good, nice looking. So imagine we have every, on every lane, we have trees across the world, meaning the forest recover will be increasing and at the same time we shall be managing or offsetting carbon dioxide. Yes. Good. And that's very exciting. And um, you, you also, uh, we were talking just earlier about, you know, the agricultural sector. I mean, Uganda has been quite uh, successful in organic agriculture um, and exporting those products to, say, Europe, uh, where there's markets for organic agriculture. Um, how is this also benefiting the, the ecosystems and, and the nature? You significantly believe that Uganda was named uh, the part of Africa simply because of its outlook, because of its beautiful nature. And in this country, over 65% dwellers or citizens depend on agriculture. Similarly, that over 30% GDP contribution in every financial year in Uganda comes from the agricultural sector. So through the Ministry of uh, Agriculture, you know, its programs like OWC, that is Operation Wealth Recreation, NADIS, all of these efforts aims at increasing the rate of people involving them, themselves in ag agriculture beyond planting food, but also growing food for use for sale at household level to increase their income. What do I mean here? We have specific ways, for example, we are promoting regenerative agriculture. This is all about sustainable land use. Eh? Eh? sustainable production to sustain the food system, promoting the food heresy. We are promoting the so-called organic manure use. We transform people's mindset from inorganic fertilizers, which are so much negative for affecting the soils, to organic fertilizers. And here we are talking about the mulching, you know, uses of this. Because for them, for organic fertilizers, they keep the soil regenerated, they keep microbes better in the soils. At the same time, we expect an increase in the outcome, that is in the product. Similarly, we have programs against plastic pollution or non-biodegradable pollutants. In this way, I mean the polythene bags, the, the plastics, that before they go into landfills, we have other ways of recycling, reusing, that's at the country level. In this way, we aim at promoting what we call soil health. With the promoted soil health through soil financing, please, agriculture will be at a stable rate. Uh, through the government program, the supporting, we have agricultural loans available for our farmers, we have uh, the grow projects for our women uh, at a household level, that all of them, they keep getting empowered, energized to participate actively in agriculture. Beyond planting trees for food, but also to sell, to sustain our economy, we keep shooting. Our overall intention is to become the Africa's food basket that we, we reach a stage that we are no longer importing foods in Uganda. We only export foods. And at this level, I was very, very happy to find uh, our dried mangoes here in Baku. Uh, tell us about uh, what's happening with fossil fuels in Uganda. We have our stand when we talk about the fossil fuel use. Our stand remains on phasing down fossil fuel use, but not phasing out the fossil fuel use. Why? That Uganda as a country, we have just explored our oil. We are just benefiting from it to empower our economy. That 90% of Baku here, their economy depends on oil production. So as a country, we have just discovered ours. We believe and trusted that if managed properly, we are in a position of gaining or boosting our economy. How are we doing this? We have structures, we have strategies of minimizing the expected impacts, negative impacts of this ECOP project. Similarly, we have structures, we have strategies, decarbonization pathways. We, our president of research just launched the use of lithium batteries, electric engines, electric cars, that in the next two years to come, you will come to Kampala, you will not find any combustive engines based on fossil fuels. We shall be having electric cars in place. Similarly, we are into regenerative uh, forestation programs with an intention of including the forest recover to minimize the offsets. We have the renewable energies in place, the biofuels, all of these aims at minimizing our emissions. In this way, uh, for example, when you talk about uh, this project, for us, we believe that it is going to have negligible negative 
impacts to our ecosystem. Why? We are setting up multiple ways of minimizing its impacts. Thank you very much. Well, thanks very much. It sounds very exciting in Uganda and you're moving forward on many fronts. Uh, best of luck. <laughs>